and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hello, hello. I'm Jen Liddy. Thank you for tuning in this week. This is the Idea Space Podcast, and I am your host. And if you've been listening this month, you know that I'm talking about this idea of resistance. And just to remind you, resistance is that feeling you get when you just don't wanna. I'm sure you've had this feeling before. I don't know anybody who hasn't had resistance to something. And sometimes it's something we need to do that we know will be good for us, but we just don't wanna. And sometimes we take resistance a little too far. I know I have, and I've actually gotten into a toddler-like mental meltdown. And I'm wondering, have you ever done this? Like, you know there's something you have to do, something you need to do, but you're so resistant to it that your brain brings up excuse after excuse after excuse why you don't want to, you can't, or you simply just won't. I literally don't know anyone who has not experienced resistance of some sort. Let me give you some examples of resistance to doing something hard and new. These are these come from me, but they I also see them in my clients. When we feel doubt that a potential solution can help us, that's resistance. Like you've gotten the perfect thing handed to you on a platter and you're like, well, I don't know if she's exactly the person to help me. Well, I don't know that I can actually commit to that. That doubt is resistance. Another way that you feel resistance is when you have fear around whether the hard work will actually work and help you solve your problem. This shows up like you know, okay, you want to sell a program. And so these are the things you need to do for marketing. And you're so afraid of putting yourself out there with marketing that you're just like, well, I'm just not going to learn it. That's too hard. I can't do it. When you have the fear that you don't want to do the hard work or whether the hard work will pay off, that's resistance. And the third example I'm giving you today is when you experience confusion about how to move forward, that's resistance. Your brain is like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how. I don't know where to get the information. Well, that is resistance just because you've never done this particular thing before. Of course, you don't know how, but like living in the confusion, that's resistance. What I want to teach you today is that moving through resistance actually creates confidence. It proves to you that you can do hard things even if you're scared, resistant, or unsure of the how. That, that moving through, that's how you reach your goal. So when we choose to move through resistance, I promise you there is great ease on the other side. Why? Because A, you've moved forward toward what you really want. That feels amazing. And B, there's also ease that comes because you've proven to yourself that you can do hard things. It's not easy to move through resistance, but you're already in a hard spot. Moving through resistance creates ease for you. And that is like, oh my God, why have I been putting this off for so long? Now, personally and professionally, I have a lot of awesome examples of resistance. If you checked into episode 21 two weeks ago, you know that I was talking about my journey of going gluten-free and grain-free and how I resisted it for just about eight years. I have been the queen of resistance, and any time I've wanted to make a leap in my life or any sort of change, I've experienced severe resistance. It's normal. Most of us do. Today, I'm going to tell you a different story. And resistance has never served me well until I came to realize how it was holding me back and the patterns I was creating for myself. So today I'm going to tell you a different story and teach you how to know if you're in resistance and then figure out a game plan to move forward. 
Let's start with the big question. How do you know if you're resisting? You know, it's important because your brain is probably coming up with tons of excuses and reasons and justifications that keep you from actually realizing you're even resisting at all. And that is what's keeping you from your goals. So, okay, how do you know if you're in resistance? The the example I'm using today is from my first business. It was toward the end of the business. I was in deep, deep, deep resistance and I didn't know it. I knew changes needed to be made. I had no idea how to make those changes. I was terrified of those changes. They were going to make people unhappy. They were going to make people uncomfortable. And I had some really strong beliefs around the changes that needed to be made. The resistance kept me from making any changes or moving forward. And I was really stuck. Here's what it looked like. Number one, complaining. I was complaining a lot. I was so unhappy. And I was talking about all the things that were making me unhappy all the time. I was talking about it with my husband, with my family, with my best friend, and I was talking about it with myself. I was really mired down in my complaining and unhappiness. Now I see it as the complaining that it was, but at the time it felt very justified. It felt like, no, 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 this isn't complaining. This is truth. Things in the business were very hard. We were struggling financially and we felt like nothing could turn it around. We were angry and frustrated and hopeless. All of the partners felt this way. We felt like there must be a better way to do business, but someone wasn't giving us the right ingredient to complete the recipe. We didn't invest in anyone to guide us. We had a big story about that. We didn't have the courage to do that. And we couldn't get out of our own way. It got to the point where I felt that no action could fix anything. So I'd kind of given up trying to make changes. To feel better, I complained. And I want you to know, complaining changed nothing. So if you find yourself complaining a lot, or maybe you don't see it as complaining, you see it as justifiably talking about the bullshit that's going on in your life, you might be in resistance. Now, my complaining led me to feel lost. That's my number two thing. Complaining changes nothing. And because it changed nothing, I just felt constantly lost. Things got harder and harder and I got more and more exhausted and lost. And I did not know who to turn to for help. Frankly, I didn't even know which questions to ask to get help. I also didn't know who to trust. I especially didn't trust myself anymore. I knew I wanted and needed things to be different in the business and in the relationships that were there. But in order to make those changes, I had to do some really hard things. And I had to have some really hard conversations. I didn't know if I could do that. I didn't trust myself. Why? Because I didn't know myself anymore. I had let myself go so far down the rabbit hole that I didn't even know who I was. I had no game plan and no guide to help me find my way. I guess you could say I was pretty committed to distrusting myself because I didn't get any help. I was committed to staying lost because everything else seemed so much harder. It was so much easier to stay lost and complaining than it was to do the uncomfortable thing of getting help or asking questions or or doing something different. So I stayed lost for far too long. And if I'd been real with myself about how I felt, I'd have moved through the resistance much more quickly and without so much difficulty. The third thing that indicated I was in resistance was I was physically emotionally and mentally exhausted. I had trouble making decisions. I had trouble thinking clearly. Now I feel like I am a cognitively really smart person. I like I'm quick and I can create content and I can put two and two together, but I felt sluggish. When you are working so hard and getting nowhere, I promise you're going to feel exhausted, burned out even. Watch the resentment show up and watch yourself start to give up. When you're in a state of resistance, you're tired, but you start to mentally learn how to move, maneuver around the hard things rather than through it. You think this creates ease because in the moment it feels like the easy button. What happens is you figure out how to move around having hard conversations rather than just having the hard conversations. I would figure out how to work around a boundary problem rather than solve it once and for all. Working around something is great until you realize how much energy it steals from you. 
And when you realize how much energy goes into the workaround and you realize the problem isn't getting solved, you're just kind of putting Band-Aids on everything, you start to see your goals aren't getting reached and you aren't feeling better. Most importantly, you aren't feeling better. That was me in a nutshell. I was so exhausted that I wound up losing myself. I described it at the time as feeling crispy. Like I I remember looking at some Brussels sprouts that I pulled out of the oven that I was roasting and I was like, I totally relate to these Brussels sprouts because they were crispy and shriveled up. And that's how I felt. At one point, I went so far as to say I feel dead inside. So if you're throwing your hands up in the air a lot and shrugging, I bet you're exhausted. And that's a huge time and energy suck from your life. Complaining, feeling lost, and being exhausted were three ways I knew I was resisting making big changes in my life. So why do we resist? Because it's easier to bitch about things. It's easier to throw up your hands and say, I just don't know how. It's easier to work around the problems because you're just so damn tired. Okay, so maybe you're getting to this point in the podcast and you see that you're in resistance somewhere. Maybe you know that the thing you want is going to require a new game plan. Now what? How do you move out of resistance? I love this question. So let me tell you how, and you probably won't like the answer. Instead of resisting, try surrendering into it. Yes, it's uncomfortable, but so is working around the problem. Can you see right now that no matter what you're doing, it's uncomfortable? Where you are right now in resistance with the complaining and the exhaustion, that's uncomfortable. Doing the hard thing. That's uncomfortable. But one of those choices gets you out of your own way and heading toward your goal, and the other one keeps you stuck. So, how do we get out of resistance? It's simple. We stop avoiding it. We stop wishing it would go away. We stop wishing that it would just leave. We stop bitching and complaining. That thing that you want, it's on the other side of resistance. Bitching, Being lost, feeling exhausted are not the way to the thing you want. So let's get specific. Acknowledge that you're not where you want to be and that something is in your way. Two, admit that you're not happy with the way things are right now and you want it to be different. Three, accept that you're going to have to do hard and uncomfortable things to get where you want to go. And then four, get real with yourself. Notice the patterns. Where are you complaining? Who are you complaining about? What are you complaining about? Are you using excuses? Are you justifying everything? I'll be honest, I couldn't do this for myself. My best friend had noticed how far down the rabbit hole I had gone. My husband had noticed, but both of them were just too close to me for me to hear them. I couldn't use them as a way to get out. And at this point, I didn't have a personal coach. I don't really think I understood or believed in coaching the way I do now. But I did have two guides, and I want to tell you about them because maybe you can find a guide for yourself. The first was Pam. She was an intuitive leadership coach working with my one partner and I to help us become better leaders for our company. In one of our last sessions, she looked at me and started crying. She said, you don't even look like yourself anymore. Where are you? Who are you? What's it going to take for you to get back to yourself? And I looked at her completely deadpan, without emotion, and said in a monotone, I don't know. I just don't know. And that moment was so defining for me because I realized that people outside of my immediate circle could see how deep into it I was. I was so far into the resistance that I was dead inside. And it was jarring at that point to know I wasn't kidding anyone anymore. That realization brought me to my next guide, Chris, who's a meditation coach. She took me through some deep meditations to help me see my struggle more clearly. She spent hours helping me come to a place where possibility lived. Now, before Chris, I didn't believe that there was any possibility. I was barely breathing. How can you see possibility when you're barely breathing? You're just trying to get through the damn day. So see how painful resistance is? Both living in it and getting out of it is painful. 
But I promise you on the other side of the hard work of getting out of resistance, of surrendering to it is great ease. If you're ready to feel ease in your life, if you're ready for things to stop feeling so hard, you need some help. Help to see possibility, to know which steps are needed to get you where you want to go. And if you're a creative, busy woman who's tired of resisting, who's tired of being tired and wants to see her business idea grow, it's time to reach out. I have a three-part system that I can teach in my online group coaching program, and it's easy to learn. In the idea space, I show you how to do the hard things and get out of resistance while still being in alignment with who you are. I'll teach you to master your time and master your mind so you can master your goals. That, my friend, is how you master your life. The group is $97 a month. I've made it super affordable because I know that creative, busy women don't trust themselves anymore. They don't trust that they can get where they want to go. And I want you to earn your trust back. It includes a whole bunch of support, and if you join during the month of March, you'll enjoy a free 30-minute private coaching call where we pull your 90-day goals out of your head and literally create a plan, a step-by-step micro plan to help you go get it. You can learn more at www.genlity.com. Now, if you're in resistance and this seems like you and everything I talked about today sounds like you, I want you to just get really present. Where are you complaining? Where are you exhausted? Where are you done. Join me next week where I share with you the story of a woman who was tired of the done feeling and she learned how to get out of resistance and stop resisting who she really was and surrender to who she really is so that she could become the woman that she wanted to be and create the business and life that she wanted. Check in next week. See you then. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Bye.